The Inventor's Secret What Thomas Edison Told Henry Ford by Susan Slade, illustrated by Jennifer Black Reinhardt. Not so long ago, the world was a little slower, a little simpler, and a whole lot quieter. No airplanes roaring overhead, no cars rumbling down the roads, no phones ringing in pockets. Then things began to change because of two curious boys, Thomas and Henry, and one secret. Thomas got into trouble a lot. It always started with an experiment. He just had to see how things worked. Thomas was curious about chemistry. He mixed up colorful potions in his basement, but explosions shook the house night and day. Thomas was curious about locomotives. He got a job as a newsboy, selling papers on a train but one of his experiments set the baggage car on fire. Most of all, Thomas was curious about electricity, invisible energy that flowed and stopped, sizzled and popped. He tied wires to his cat's tails and rubbed their fur. Sparks flew that day. Henry was born 16 years after Thomas. He got in a heap of trouble too. He was always doing experiments instead of his chores. He just had to see how things worked. Henry was curious about wind-up toys. He took his sister's toys apart, but couldn't always get them back together. Henry was curious about the rushing river. He built a dam and a water wheel to catch all its energy, but flooded the neighbor's field instead. But most of all, Henry was curious about engines, machines that chugged and purred, hiccuped and whirred. He built a steam engine from a 10 gallon can, tin blades and a pipe, but it exploded and set the school fence on fire. As Thomas grew older, he dreamed of creating his own inventions, electric gadgets to make life easier. He designed an electric pen so people could rest their weary hands. His sharp pen cut a stencil that made copies. In just one day, people could print a pile of copies that would have taken weeks to write by hand. As Henry grew older, he dreamed of creating his own inventions too. Powerful engines to make life easier. When he was 12, he spied something amazing, an engine powered buggy. He'd never seen a vehicle that wasn't pulled by a horse. Henry sprinted up to the buggy, his mind filled with questions. What powered the engine? How fast did it go? What could it do? The driver boasted the vehicle ran on coal and steam. It went about 12 miles an hour. It's engine powered farm equipment and huge saws. The mighty machine got Henry's mind spinning. An engine didn't eat or rest like a horse. It could carry people, mail and news fast. From then on, Henry thought about one thing, making his own vehicle a car hardworking families could afford. Then folks could go to town anytime, not just the weekly sun Saturday trip. They could visit faraway places they'd only ever heard about. But Henry couldn't even repair his broken watch. How would he ever build a car? Then he heard about Thomas's electric pen. What's his secret? Henry wondered. How did he make such a marvelous machine? 
Later, Thomas created an invention that recorded and played back sounds. When Thomas talked into his new phonograph, Mary had a little lamb, it talked right back. Mary had a little lamb. His phonograph could also play music. Henry was still dreaming about cars. Everywhere he went, his pockets rattled with metal parts. When he was 17, he took a job at a machine shop to learn more about engines and machinery. Two years later, a farmer hired Henry to operate a new steam engine. Soon, Henry began tinkering on a steam engine of his own. He strapped the homemade engine to an old mowing machine. His contraption sputtered along, sputtered along for 40 feet, then collapsed. Henry's design was a flop, but everyone was buzzing about Thomas's talking photograph. What's his secret? Henry wondered. Meanwhile, Thomas was working on an electric light so people could read past dark. After changing his design many times, he created an incandescent light bulb that burned all night. Henry was determined to make his vehicle work, determined. So he took a job at a company that made engines. One day he repaired a fancy engine from England. It had a four stroke cylinder that burned gas to create power. Fascinated, he built a model of the engine to see how it worked. After that, Henry spent long nights and Saturdays working on his car. Friends and coworkers helped too. When he finally rolled his creation out of his workshop, it had two cylinders for double the power, a three gallon tank for gas and four bicycle tires for wheels. Henry's quadricycle could go up to 20 miles per hour, but it cost a fortune to make. Most people thought his rattling gas buggy was a joke. Get a horse, people shouted at Henry, but the whole country was crazy about Thomas's electric light. Henry scratched his head. What's his secret? Still, Henry believed in his dream. Although he knew that other people were working on gas cars, he was determined to make the best. One that was easy to drive, big enough for families, and most important, a car that everyone could afford. While Henry was working on his design, Thomas earned patents for over 100 new inventions. Henry couldn't stand it any longer. He had to find out Thomas's secret. So Henry hopped a train in Detroit and chugged 600 miles to New York City. That's where important businessmen, including Thomas, were gathering for a meeting. Henry did some fast talking and got invited to a big dinner with Thomas as the guest of honor. During dinner, everyone kept talking to Thomas. Henry peered down the large table at the famous inventor. He waited and waited and waited. Finally, Henry gathered his courage. He moved right next to Thomas and told him he was building a gas car. Is it a four cycle cylinder? Is it a four cycle engine? Thomas asked. Henry lit up brighter than any light bulb. He grabbed a menu and started sketching his engine. Thomas fired off question after question. Henry happily answered each one. And that's when it happened. Blue eyes sparkling, Thomas leaned in close to Henry. He banged his fist on the table. Keep at it, he shouted. Henry smiled. Keep at it. Henry laughed. He'd known Thomas's secret all along. So Henry kept at it year after year. He made a car named the Model A, but it cost too much money for most hardworking folks. He kept at it and made the Model B still too expensive. Four cylinders, four seats, even more expensive. Model C, F, K, and N weren't quite right either. Model C, bigger gas tank, extra foot room, cost too much. Model F, five passengers, still too much money. How many letters would it take? Then he remembered Thomas had changed his light bulb design thousands of times 
before he got it right. So Henry kept at it. Model K, powerful engine, six cylinders, but too um, heavy, 1,800 pounds on, too expensive. Model N, lighter weight, but too small, bumpy ride, but a good price. Finally, he made it. He made a special car, the Model T, though most people called her Tin Lizzie. Lizzie was light and fast and had four powerful cylinders. She didn't have fancy extras like a driver's door or a gas gauge, seat belts, or shocks, but she had plenty of room for a family. Millions of people bought their own Tin Lizzies. She took folks to town whenever they wanted. She carried people places they'd never seen. Best of all, she brought people across the country closer together. Things had changed. The world was a little faster and a whole lot more exciting. And it was all because of two curious inventors, Thomas and Henry, and one secret. Keep at it. The end. This book also has some excellent resources in the back. You can learn what the author learned and what the illustrator did to create his illustrations. We also have more details about some of the inventions like Thomas's electric pen and the phonograph. We can see some more information about Tom Henry's earlier cars and the Model T. We also have a whole page full of source notes that um, point to special areas within the story with more explanations. And finally, um, this has the life of Thomas Edison and the life of Henry Ford in a dual timeline. So cool how each of them um, lived and contributed to our modern world. Finally, there is a biography section in the back, a bibliography section in the back, which tells some websites if you feel like exploring more or if you want to read some more books. Thank you for listening to The Inventor's Secret, What Thomas Edison Told Henry Ford.